Podcast. The Guy, Shannon and Clint Podcast. And we are doing Mavericks right now. We are so loose. We are so loose that we can't even be bothered finding the Maverick sound effects. Pew, 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 pew. It's so we're actually, doing it with our mouths. That's how loose we are. I just don't know where it is. I don't know where Clint keeps it. So I, I'm a loser, but just stick with me. We've hey. got Antonia up first on oh. 0800 The Edge. Antonia, why are you a maverick? Hi, I'm not trying to sound too rebellious or anything. Okay. When you're crossing the road and the red man stops and you're supposed to not cross, yeah. I still cross. Oh! oh bow, 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 bow. <laughs> that, that's intense, Antonia. You Light better be. Oh, no. You better be, be, be very. Be, that was good. She's getting. She's getting very rebellious. Hey, I'm so. Do you know how much of a maverick I am, Sharon? How how much? I'm so loose that sometimes when I play uh, Mario Kart on the Wii, mm-hmm. I they've got a safety strap on it. I play strapless. Oh my god! I'm riding beer back. I'm a loose cannon. <laughs> we really need to find the gun sound effect, Kimberly. Why are you a maverick? Well, I was yesterday. I was just crazy, yeah. and I only had four servings of fresh fruit and vegetables instead of the recommended five. Wow! <laughs> oh, oh, pretty that. crazy! Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Kimberly, Kimberly, we, we, yeah. call, we called you and you were very nervous about coming on the edge and saying why you're a maverick. I thought I was going to forget what I said. <laughs> hey, well, you nailed it, babes, and I'm very proud of you, and I'd just like to thank you for contributing, so I'm going to award you some sort of prize from the Million Dollar Prize cover because uh, oh, we really awesome. appreciate it. I know, I know what we're going to give you. Much. We're going to give you Godzilla, which is out now on Blu-ray and DVD. Woo! Woo! Oh, stop it. Oh, stop you, it. You're That's s- just out of control. <laughs> you stop it, you, s- you silly sausage maverick. Hey, you- okay, fire the text machine. I'm such a maverick. I bought new sheets this week. Didn't even wash them before using them. Oh, Even God. though it said to watch out. Bam, bam, bam. That is off the hook. Here's a good one. Here's a good one. Here's a good one for the text machine. This is a classic. This is one that I got a week ago, and I s- saved it because it was so good. So I'm texting, I'm, I'm a well-known rebel within the community for my lack of adequate sun protection. In summer, I will quite regularly go outside without my sun hat on. <gasps> and I'm not talking shaded areas. Oh, God. I'm talking full sun exposure. Oh! <laughs> Sounds like someone needs to invest in a back flap cap. <laughs> People are loose, man. So loose. Shannon, how are you a maverick? Okay, so I've got two things, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh what? Okay, hang on, do that again. You cut out. I thought you were doing a gag and you were being a, a maverick by hanging up on air. <laughs> <laughs> so, that would be pretty loose. Go again, Shannon. Why are you a maverick? They're like red and green lights to go on the motorway when there's traffic. Yeah. Yep. I just went through the red light. Oh! oh, oh that's a minor shivers. offense. If the police catch you, you will be fined. I know, but as I was doing that, I'm talking on the phone while oh. typing. Shit, hey. shit, we can't encourage that, Shannon. We can't encourage that. Shush, shush. Chris, why are you a... Oh, no. Bill, why are you a maverick? Bill. Bill. Hi, why are you a maverick? My name's Dallas. Dallas. <laughs> you're such a maverick um, <laughs> that I thought your name was Bill and I screwed it up. But I'll blame Chang anyway. Uh, Dallas, yeah, you, Dallas, with the name Dallas, you immediately sound like a, like a guy from a western, like a cowboy. Or or the Ambo on Shorten Street. Dallas, possibly. The, he's a maverick. Mm-hmm. How are you a maverick, Dallas? I'm a maverick that... I went to the smokers area at work. Yeah. I wasn't smoking. Weren't oh! smoking smokers area? Oh! oh! Dallas, you are a crazy, crazy maverick. Thanks so much for calling, Dallas Bill. Um, here's a good one. This is kind of gross, so close your ears if you're prone to that sort of thing. What, so, what? Okay. Someone texted in. I don't know how you close your ears. I'm so maverick that when I try clothes on, I don't even wear underwear, even if it's a swimming suit. Oh, mate! Oh, I don't even want to. Forget, I don't even want to do the siren for that. That's loose. That is disgusting. Get naked. Get what off you, me. What, uh. what if? What if you had some sort of like thing? Still doing the guns, babes. The guy Sharon and Clint podcast. I'm someone who often thinks that they're funny, and Do often you? I'm not funny, and <laughs> as a result, it backfires badly, and I work myself into the most awkward situations of all time. Mm-hmm. Happened to me many a times before. Luckily, it's never been anything serious. Not like Ben Boyce, who once pretend, and Sharon's husband, who once pretended to be a pilot at an airport. Hey, stop Nothing bringing like that, that up. <laughs> I, I can't let it go. It was like let five it go. years ago. 
Anyway, 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 anyway. Um, this has happened on a major scale over on a plane in the United States where a dude flying on a plane from Philadelphia to the Caribbean yelled out on the plane, I've been to Africa, I have Ebola, and you are all screwed. Whoa! Turns out... It backfired a little bit. It did. And the flight attendant was not polite. Now, usually the most politest people in the world, because what happened was he was sitting in his seat and he was probably like the second section back of economy. Yeah. They had to get these three dudes in full quarantine, masks, blue suits, everything, to come and remove him from the plane. And because all of the passengers were like worried about if he was being serious, the flight attendant said this. Listen very carefully. All right. I want everybody to sit. I need your attention, okay? It's gonna look worse than it is, okay? I really want you to remember, I, it's a death of my being. I've done this for 36 years. I think the man that has said this is an idiot. And I'll say that straight out. Oh, I love it. like, I think he's an idiot. I'll say that straight up. <laughs> That's I love gold. him. That's so gold. then they went to get this guy off the plane. The guys in the suits are like looking at him like, you dick, do you know how long it took for me to get this suit on? It's like ridiculous. Then he was walking down, everyone's like booing him off the plane. He's like, <laughs> I'm not even from Africa. Take a joke, guys. It's such an idiot. He's the number one idiot. And it just goes to show don't make dumb jokes about stuff that is very serious. And especially don't do them on plane. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint podcast. I like it. And right now, we are doing a little feature that we like to call Life, Life Hacks. Hacks. Entry granted. The yeah. little things you can do just to get better at life. Uh, here's a good one. If you get blood on your carpet because you're doing a murder or something. Oh, wow. Don't wash it off. Let it dry. And then... It vacuums off like dry dirt, no stains or marks. Oh, but wouldn't it be smelly? Isn't blood sm- like? Oh, mate, I'm just reading a text. Blood on, on the carpet. You know, thanks to whoever texts that in. Sharon, stop asking questions. Entry granted. We got one on our Facebook page uh, today, and it was apparently it's from the last Bible that somebody uh, sent us. It says, if you accidentally text the wrong person on an iPhone, and because you can't cancel message, yeah. quickly switch your phone into flight mode, and it will stop the message from sending. Oh, that's quite good. Entry granted. Finally, a flight mode one that I actually like. Here's one. If you if you want to. <laughs> Act like you're more on like um, if you're like on a like a if you want to pretend like you're on a foreign film, mm-hmm. then just have all your meetings in art galleries. Entry granted. You gave me a grant without even asking. I think skills. it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. We got Michaela on 0800 The Edge. What's your life hack? Um, if you use baking soda on your face mm-hmm. and you've, when you've got like lots of pimples and stuff, um, it really helps because it clears your face. Oh, I've heard and that it one works, before. It, it works better than face wash too. Boom, girl, you're getting one of these. Entry. Granted. Thank you. No, thank you. That was an awesome life hack. Hey, we're going to hook you up with a double pass to go to the movies. You can go and see Let's Be Cops, which is in cinemas now. Okay. Thanks so much. Hey, 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 well, life hack. Sound real excited about prizes and you might get an extra prize. No, I was... Ooh. Still not accepted? Okay, cool. <laughs> she did. <laughs> oh, I feel bad. She didn't realise she had a chance to win an extra prize. If you've got a life hack, call us now, 0800 The Edge, or text us to 3343. Yeah. Here's uh, one from the text machine. Um, tell a girl she's fat and she will appreciate your honesty and love you. I'm not even going to give you a not grinder for that. <laughs> I just want to pretend you didn't say it. I didn't say it. It's from the text machine. Whatever. Sophie, what's your life one. hack? It's a good one. If you're baking yeah. and you need to put baking paper into your pan and yeah. you need to cut it to be the right size, Size, rather yeah. than using a pen or a pencil, which is kind of disgusting that your food would touch that, if you use the corner of a dark chocolate bar, you can use like a crayon. <gasps> Excellent. And then that way, whatever's left on the paper is delicious chocolate. That's wonderful. You are so, so smart. Entry granted. Uh, follow up life hack from me. What? Instead of like baking some muffins or something, just get the dark chocolate bar, just eat that. Saves a lot of time, tastes delicious. I'll agree with that. Good. Entry. You've just eliminated so many steps. That's so smart. <laughs> so many. Thank you so much for your call, Sophie. Thanks, Sophie. All right. Going to line two now. Sorry, I've forgotten your name. What was your name? Oh, rude. Hello. Paige. Hello. What was your name? Paige. Hey, Paige. Paige. What's cracking? I'm so sorry, Paige. What's your life hack? <laughs> um, if you have really bad pimples, it's sort of like the other baking soda one. You um, you put a little bit a little bit of toothpaste on each one, and then they basically just disappear. <gasps> Holy! That that is going to say so much. So many people okay, a bit of cash okay, as okay, well. Okay, okay. Entry 
granted. I'm a man, uh, like, or I'm an adult, so I don't have that many problems with, like, pimples anymore. But here's what I got. Inside your nose Really? Pimples. What's that one there? Yeah, that's actually a pimple there. Uh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> no, 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 here. I was going to say, though, is I have pimples inside my nose. Yes. That's gross. Maybe so, you should just... Stick some toothpaste up there. Yes, yeah, and some ba- snort some baking soda. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> no, anyway, thanks for your life hack. <laughs> All right, uh, Bradley, you're on the air. What's your life hack? Wants to do with uh, saving a bit of fuel at the pumps because I know everyone can do with that. Yeah, yeah. bro, hard. Um, you know when like they do like spend forty bucks or so, get four cents a litre off. Yeah. And, like, instead of like going through and filling the entire car. Yep. Pop, go in, pop 40 bucks in, get your four cents off, go around the block again, put another 40 bucks in, go around the again. If you're lucky, you might get 12 cents off just for filling your car. Genius! Oh. Life hack of the day, Bradley. I, I take my hat off to you, You know you, sir. what, Bradley? I love you and everything, but... No oh. entry permissible. Yeah, but if, well, if you've got a... Um, you're going to spend that 20 tw- fuel can, you can fill that. That's about 40 bucks. Yeah. There's another four cents but later Bradley, on. Bradley, you're going to be wasting... Money. You're going to be wasting this money driving around the uh, around the block. You're going to end up using that 12 cents of fuel. We're getting... S- well, you don't... But if you don't, if you don't, you can also instead of going around the block, just go around the pump. Shit. So just pull out one drive, go around the other. Shares dog. You've got a lot of spare time, Bradley mate. Bradley is clearly a genius, and he's going to take all those four cents that he's saving mm-hmm. and put it in the bank, and he's going to be a millionaire one day. It just Ow, you wait. Oh, look Good out. Good luck the text machine for the ladies. Ladies. Um, mascara, if your mascara is lumpy, I love mascara. Um, put it in a glass of hot water. Yes, that's a really good one. But then don't put it on your eyes straight away, okay? You, have you burnt your eyes before? No, I'm just saying. From someone someone will. Someone will. I can see Megan from the day show doing that. All right, we've got one more. Hannah, what's your life hack? You know how council people, when they come and give you permission to take down your trees? Yeah. Yes. And if they say no, go what? to that tree and dig a hole, like, around the root, <laughs> and then you put some pool chemicals in it. <gasps> oh and my then God. it pulls down, like, slowly. <laughs> Hannah, that is genius I, slash evil. I really want to give you a granted, but at the wicked. same time, I'm like, mm, I don't think that's also, ethically if, very good okay, idea. Okay, can we just, we're going to put a disclaimer out there. Don't go around um, poisoning your neighbours' trees that peeve you <laughs> off, okay? You can't do it. It's illegal no. and you'll get in trouble. The Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. The Edge, Guy, Sharon and Clint, that is Stan Walker with Bulletproof. He's going to be on the judging panel of X Factor New Zealand next year. And the auditions, the pre-auditions to make it to the big TV live auditions are starting tomorrow in Auckland. They're going to be happening Saturday and Sunday from 10am at the AUT. And then they'll be in Queenstown on Monday. So what we're going to do is we're going to warm people up for this with the pre pre-auditions, and we'll be the judge. All right, let's kick it off. Harmony, it's your time to shine. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna swing from the chandeliers, from the chandeliers. Awesome. Uh, that is really, oh really good. That was, Harmony, that was incredible. <laughs> are inc- you, you've got to be auditioning for x Factor New Zealand, am I right? Yeah, I am. What town are you in? Um, I'm actually in Howarder. Howarder. Oh. So that means you got to drive, do you? Or are they going to Howarder? Yeah, I'm going to Palmerston North to do it. To awesome. Hey, good luck, and I reckon you're going to smash it. You're you're the front runner. Definitely. We'll go with uh, Meter next. Meter, are you there? You ready to sing? Yeah. Okay. Let's hear it. <clears throat> Slow down, you crazy child. You're so ambitious for a juvenile, but then if you're so smart, then tell me why are you still so afraid? Hey, you know. That was good. not what I was expecting at all. When you like first started, when you first started talking to us, I was like, oh god, I wasn't really sure what we we're gonna get through. But that was pretty good. Where are you gonna audition for X Factor? Um, I, I don't know if I'm, I will. I don't know. No, you, to, you have to, you Meta. Have, you, you have to. You have the. You have the. Um, you have the ability. My tip is though, if you're gonna do an audition, not that I'd know, I'm an idiot, but um, from what I've seen from the X Factor auditions, you gotta sing like the uh, hook, like sing the banging part of the song. Yeah. Can you? Can you? Can you hit us with a chorus? 
Oh, okay. Um, Cause you know that when the truth is told That you can get what you want Or you can just get old You're gonna kick off before you even get halfway oh, Mina, you have to promise us You have to promise us that you will audition for X Factor Because we want to see you on our TV screen No, maybe No, let's, you must, you let's, must let's You'll let's be awesome another one Wake, he's just gone He's just jumped He's he's bolted He doesn't want to find if he's won or not Wake, yeah, you read a sing? Bro? Yeah. Let's hear it. When you say I'm crazy, cause you only, I know what you've done. When you say call me baby, I know I'm not the only one. There's Beautiful. What do you reckon, Shaz Dog? Because I reckon he's a front runner, but Harmony was mind blowing. Well, it's as definitely well. between Waki and Harmony. I, uh, I'm going to go with Harmony. Harmony. <laughs> Congratulations! Harmony. You're the winner of the pre pre auditions. Oh <laughs> Harmony. Before before we finish, can can you can you try and give me the top the top bit of uh, uh, Chandelier where he goes? I'm gonna sing like a bird from. Do you know the bit? I know the soaring bit. Can you do that bit? Oh my god, um, I'm freaking out. Go on, girl, you can do it. I'm gonna sing from the chandeliers, from the chandeliers. Oh fuck! <laughs> Prep right now. Yeah, this it's is good. good prep. Yeah. No swearing in front of Stan Walker and the judges, okay? Good luck, honey. <laughs> okay. We've got high expectations for, for you, okay? The Guy Shannon and Clint Podcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome live in the studio a childhood hero of mine and a knight. Oh, I, I feel like we should have like scrubbed it up a bit more and like done some more, <laughs> got some tassels or some glitter or something. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the wonderful, the amazing. Sir John Kerwin! Hey! Look there it is! What do you, you look at me like? You don't remember me, do you? I do, I do remember you well. You remember hassling me at Eden Park? Okay, well, I wasn't going to bring that up. And I was watching football <laughs> practice. You just used me that day. You thought, no one else is talking to me, and there he is. Okay, this is just like the um, Lord interview all over again when she called me out for giving her some shit. Well, then maybe you should stop being mean to people. <laughs> okay, no, he was I'll nice. Get, he was I'll, nice. Just yes. everyone else was ignoring him, and so he went <laughs> for the easy shot. You know, JK's the blues coach. Okay, okay, okay. He'll, he'll say hello. I'll give you the situation. As I turned up to this training session way late, I had nothing. I saw John. Kerwin, I called him over and I went for the easy stuff, which was giving him joy. And I did take a few pot shots about the blues. No, you did. That's and okay. I, I'm, I'm so, I apologize. No, I don't really apologize. Why I did it on purpose. That's but okay. I, I apologize for running into it's your okay. game. <laughs> You can't get yelled at by JK in like the first like minute of the interview. Yeah, it's a, it's, I'm going to be honest with you. It's a rocky start. But he, oh. Mr. Kerwin, you were um, a hero of mine growing up. I had running of, on instinct. It was the only... V- I owned that and Space Jam. They're the two VHSs I owned. Oh. And I used to watch it every day. It was I watched the clips of John running through the Italy team a thousand times. Wow. And that was going to be my first question, actually, for Mr. Kerwin, was going to be... Call me it, JK. JK. Joey, oh, you've had about four different names. Well, you did call me Mr. Idiot. <laughs> That dating part. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Here's my question. Is it hard um, going from being an athlete to a coach? Because when you're the coach, you're like, hey guys, why can't you just run through the other team like I used to back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> or why can't you just be awesome like I used to be? Yeah, you no, know, it's really, it's actually, it's a great question. It is difficult. Yeah. Because what you realise when you're a coach is you coach everyone. So some people have ability more so than others, like <laughs> Zinni Brook, for example. I mean, mm-hmm. how many number eights since Zinni can drop kick from halfway? <laughs> Not but Zinni would expect all <laughs> yeah, number eights to yeah, drop yeah, kick yeah, from yeah, halfway. Yeah. So I think when you're coaching, your whole philosophy changes. It takes a year or two to sort of make the adjustment. Is it is it frustrating? No, I love it. It's you love inspiring, it? yeah. Okay. I, I, I really, really enjoy it. I, I enjoy seeing people achieve their goals. It's great to be around young, positive, fit people. I really think it's a fantastic job. Have you had any moments when you're just like, oh, I'll just do it myself, <laughs> and you like want to just get on the field and do it yourself? No. Have you seen rugby lately? I mean, <laughs> well, I didn't yeah. tackle when I played. <laughs> I, I 
reckon you know? that you could, I reckon go, you could still do it. Gym. You don't look as ha- half as banged up as a lot of all blacks in your era. Jeff Wilson used to work, walk near us and work just next door, and you're looking fitter than he is. Yeah, well, I think uh, back no in our days, no offense, Jeff, only, still love you, babes. Yeah, yeah. The only ice we had in the changing room was with a few beers in it. Now they've got to sit in the ice buckets oh. and stuff like that. So. Now the reason we have you in here, and we're um, we're we're privileged to have you here, is because you've actually released a book. It's called um, Stand By Me. And normally when we have people in for a book or a movie, we go, we love the book, we love the movie. Oh, we were so good, it was so good. And we haven't actually read it or seen it or don't even know what it is. Sharon's actually reading your book as we speak and she's loving it. Oh, it's a really, really incredible book because, I don't know, it's interesting when I read it because I never read your first book. I'll be straight up about that. But when I finish this book, I definitely will because I I, uh, suffer from anxiety and depression. And just in the introduction, I learnt two different exercises that I now use every day wow. that I had never ever heard of and I've read so many different things about it and it was really interesting so what was the experience of writing the book for you? Well I think I started by saying I'm a dad and I'm scared because I've had a mental illness and and sort of looking back on what happened to me and thinking about our teenagers so you'll get your first sign of anxiety or mental illness between 13 and 18, sometimes we're younger sometimes we'll be a little bit older Mm. but if you get onto it there and learn the techniques that Mm. you're talking about you can really be cured and, and you can go on and have a happy life. If you leave it, it gets yeah. bigger and bigger. Yeah, it gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> it's like any other illness. If you don't get on top of it early, then then to recover from it's going to be a lot harder. And so the book was about me just um, trying to supply some knowledge to parents and to kids that you're not alone. You know, it is an illness, but mm. if you get it early, then you can be absolutely fine. We, yeah. were, we were just talking about urban legend in the studio just before, and we wanted to confirm it with you whether it was true or not. We heard that when you first started doing the um, mental mental health ads on TV, it was so popular and there was so much demand coming in through the call centres and stuff like that, it crashed the system for the New Zealand depression organisation and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, the, the Harden Up one especially, yeah. because so many people had heard that. So yeah. when, when I did the Harden Up ad, um, I think there was something like 25,000 calls and crash the system yeah look me- mental, mental health has been hidden for yeah. thousands of years yeah. you know and what i want to do is is make it normal it's an illness and, yeah. and if you've got the illness you can get well i think that's something you can be really proud of because yeah. i don't think that mental illness was spoken about until you started building awareness around it especially for men but like when like when i first started battling it i would just hide it all the time because you didn't it was embarrassing to talk about whereas now you can openly be like yeah i have that and i have that but I'm still getting up and getting out of bed and going yeah. through the motions yeah, exactly. every day. And when you have a bad day, you'd be like, look, I'm having a bad day today. But mental health has had a bad rap for so long. Yeah. I mean, you know, one of my biggest fears when I was in there is I thought they are going to lock me up like uh, Jack Nicholson, One Flow Over the Cookies. <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah. then and I went back up. and watched uh, Jack Nicholson, One Flow It was actually really normal. Yeah. 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 Um, so mental illness has had a bad rap. But look, there's one in five, possibly one in three oh, that so suffer. Many people. So exactly. many people. Exactly. I'm so fired up about it because if we recognise it in our adolescents and teenagers and get it early yeah. we can really treat it and those people can get all sorts of help to just lead a normal life. This is the second part of our interview with John Kerwin who was in today to talk about his brand new book which is called Stand By Me The idea for the All Blacks is to be hard men every day, nothing phases me but there must be times when they wake up on the morning of their big game in uh, South Africa and go, this is too much this country, I cannot lose for them there's so much pressure on mm. me right now Well I think the nice thing about modern rugby is we we actually uh, prepare for it so yeah. you know we, we've got sports psychologists and but there is a lot of sort of performance anxiety yeah and whether you guys like it or not you probably suffer a little bit from it because whether yeah, you like definitely. it or not no matter how the day's going for you guys you've yeah. got to walk in and you've got to be up pretend you know? to be always yeah. like high energy yeah. but, but you don't actually pretend you actually draw that energy <laughs> out of yourself and yeah. you perform yeah. yeah and then afterwards you'll suffer some sort of downtime or lull. you keep doing that on a daily basis and then you don't look after yourself you're going to hit the wall oh, yeah. and so you've got to find that balance if i'm having a rough month or whatever, it'll be like roulette when I get up. It'll either be like, woo, it's a good day, or it'll be like, brushing my teeth is going to be a mish today. And we'll be on air, and all of a sudden I'll find this like, ah, for three minutes, and then between the songs I'll be sitting here just like, yeah. just want to go home so bad right now. We all, we all, we all have that. Partly through, um, partly the reason why I gave you so much shit at that day is because there was a lot of pressure on me to come back with a funny segment, and that's what I feel. And a, a good example of that is I was going to an All Blacks uh, naming conference with all the big dogs there, and it was um, uh, the coach and Grant Fox, and everyone was there, and all the journalists. 
journalist and old New Zealand's media there and the All Blacks is so serious. And, and I was going there with a, um, a six-year-old boy and we were going to ask, um, do you like cats, the All Blacks coaches? <laughs> And I was so nervous about doing that beforehand and so scared of the All Blacks media manager and everything like that that I vomited in the shower beforehand <laughs> and almost couldn't go. And I'm like, sure, I've just got to I've just got to get check on this before because I'm, like, I'm doing such a stupid thing, but I'm feeling so much pressure. And it's, That's uh, performance anxiety. Yeah. There and you I've go. Got to, I've got to, I had to there talk about that straight away. Yeah. I was wondering while you were here, there was one thing that really stuck with me from your book and it was like right in the start. And I was wondering if you could explain it to the listeners and it because I loved the way you worded it. The one about sitting in traffic and how you used to be stressed out about sitting in traffic and like how you decided to not be stressed about like if you could tell that story because I really loved that story and every day that's what I think of in the car well, I think that um, when you go out of Auckland, people go, "Oh, what about the traffic?" And, and you know, this is you know must be so painful. And at one stage, I was sitting in the traffic, and I was a, I was in a hurry to get somewhere, but you can't go anywhere. Yeah. No. And so, if you change your mindset and actually enjoy the moment, yeah, um, then it actually is a really cool time. You listen to more music, listen to you guys, maybe you know, yeah. look out the window, you know. And I just thought there's two ways to look at this. And so when I'm in a traffic jam, I actually love it because it's a little bit of downtime. Yeah. You can actually turn the phone off if you want. You can just take some real good time out. But I think that's life. You can you can have a mindset to everything. You know, you can you can sort of flip it on its on its head if you want to. But you just keep, need to keep reminding yourself. I mean, you know, it's tough out there at times and, and you just got to sort of say well you know I'm in a yeah. traffic jam let's yeah. sit that's back and relax things and enjoy the ride yeah because yeah. I loved that and I read it it was probably like a week and a half ago and I've been stuck in traffic a couple of times and I'm just sitting there I'm like oh like all tears like holding on my thing <laughs> yeah. and I'm like no Sharon you're going to be stuck in, in traffic just as long of being stressed as if you put on that new Megan Trainer song and jammed out in the car and that's what I did and I was like <sighs> By the time I got there, and I was like happy instead of being like, "Oh, I'm so sorry," I'm like, oh, I'm freaking out." It was and listen, so we've, helpful. We've got phones so that we can communicate. Yeah. Exactly. So you just say, "Sorry, I'm in a traffic jam I'm late," and if they don't understand, well, who cares? Do we have time for one more question? Yes, I got one more question, and this is something that I've always wondered about: Is it really hard going from being like a god? Let's be honest, that's what like being an All Black is like. You're being, you're like the top of your game. To all of a sudden, you're retired. And you've got nothing. You've got like no, you know, you know. You're, yeah, that's no, it's one of the look. It's um, in America, eighty-five percent of all gridiron players are broke, divorced, and depressed. Yeah, eighty-five or eighty-two percent, yeah. and they earn a million dollars a year. Yeah. So transition out of high competitive sport to retirement yeah. is really one of the hardest things to deal with. Yeah. And you've got to prepare for it. And we're yeah. really trying to prepare our guys for it. You know, your phone goes 50 times a day to nothing. And then you guys are forging a career. Yeah. If I'm a rugby player, I come out, you guys are 10 years into your career yeah. and my yeah. mates. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm going, well, yeah. wh- what am I going to do? And yeah. so you feel as if you you don't belong in society. So they're all things that we're aware of and trying to trying to help sports people yeah, um, prepare it for be, it. It must be terrifying. I, I didn't think about it because you always think they've got the best ever life. But then once, once the rugby team doesn't want you anymore it could be very very difficult yeah and it's like it's like anyone um losing their job yeah, yeah. it's a traumatic time it's, it's like getting fired yeah, yeah exactly it's a bit smooth then you get to do some um heat pump ads but it's still, <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh it's still pretty rough okay yeah. so the book is called um john Kerwin stand by me it was written with elliot bell and uh kirsty luden bell can i say that right? bell, yeah and uh, uh, and so there's expertise uh, from uh, specialist fields as well behind it as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm, I've got a really curious mind, and, and um, Elliot and Kirsty are, are experts in their field. So I just wanted to have ask them questions and have the answers. And we got some fantastic uh, young people to contribute to the book and tell their stories because it's not about me. I'm the parent, but there's also yeah. trying to get the you know the the teens uh, thoughts out there. So that's you know it's just been a really neat collaboration. I started out with one thing in mind and. And, um, you know, I've, I've ended up with something fantastic, so I'm really proud of it. It's Sir JK, awesome. thank you so much for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the wonderful, the amazing John Cowan! It's bloody on the internet, isn't it? One of these, uh, these bloody podcast things.